Hey, it's Bass here from Metro Hobbies, and today we're going to be talking about EDF jets. Now, if you don't know what EDF stands for, it stands for Electric Ducted Fan. So, essentially, if you've been flying for a little while, you've probably got a couple of uh, trainer planes under your belt, you've got some flight experience, and you want to step it up a little bit, maybe get something that's a little bit scale, a little bit more acrobatic, or just playing faster, then obviously EDFs is one way that you can get into it. There are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind though when transitioning to EDFs. One of them being that uh, when it comes to taking off, you can't just expect to pull back on the sticks and the thing will just take off. EDFs work a little bit differently. I'll give you an example, this is a FMS F15. Um, the way that EDFs work, obviously you have uh, an, a little fan that's inside, usually around mid-mounted mid into the jet. Uh, it sucks in a lot of air from here and then compresses that air and blows it out through the back and that creates your thrust. Because the plane does not have a front mounted propeller, the differences between this one and those sort of aeroplanes is that with the front mounted prop, as soon as that propeller is spinning, it's blowing air over the wings. So even before the plane is off the ground, the wings are already creating lift. With an EDF, it relies purely on speed, momentum, to get its airflow over the wings and get off the ground. So you need to take that into, into account. Um, you can't always expect an EDF to take off on a short field. You need to give yourself plenty of room to take off from the ground. Now there are different sizes, obviously different price points and different running costs as well to take into account. This little guy only runs on a standard 4S battery. So it just runs like a 2300 4S, and this one runs on the big 6S 3300. You can potentially run a, a bigger battery in here, but you may need to modify some of the uh, uh, fuselage and canopy and so forth to fit bigger batteries. I've heard of people running up to 5,000 milliamps in here, but they have to hack up the fuse or the canopy to make it fit. Uh, but a 3300 will get you around about three, three and a half minute flights um, if you're really giving it the beans, otherwise, uh, you can probably stretch it to about five minutes if you're cruising. This is the same thing, even though it's a smaller battery. It's only a 64 millimeter EDF, so this one will get you about three, three and a half minutes as well with a smaller battery pack. And that's pretty much all you really need to take into account. These two jets here, um, these are my own personal jets and they fly amazing. Um, these are two of my favorites. Uh, this one definitely a bit more of a trainer jet, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a bit big. However, the F-15 surprisingly flies just as easy. It is an absolutely beautiful plane in the air. It does not have retracts. Uh, the Viper does have retracts and as you can see they're two very different sizes. You've got 64 mil, there are some smaller jets that would be like a 50 mil and then you've got bigger ones that go to 80 mil, 90 mil and you've, you can even go all the way up to 120 mil EDF um, units out there as well which usually go into big balsa kits uh, these are big thousand plus dollar aircraft by the time they're completed, so they're a little bit different. Yeah. Very, very cool aircraft, uh, something that if you really want to push your skills or, or develop your skills a little bit further, this is definitely worth getting into and trying out.